This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this cool Sunday morning as we gather together to worship the Lord. As we gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather together to fellowship one with another, to pray for one another, to lift up one another, to make a difference in one another's lives. We gather today as God's wonderful people. Hymn number 98, To God Be the Glory. Glad to have y'all this morning. And today is the baptism 
of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he began his ministry. John was called by God and equipped by God to prepare his ministry for one purpose, and that was to prepare the way for Jesus Christ to come as the Messiah, as the Savior of the world, to proclaim the coming of Jesus Christ to the world. And there in the Jordan Valley where John was preaching, John was also baptizing with water. And John says, I baptized you with water, but there is one that is greater than I. I'm not even worthy to loose the lackets of his shoes, but when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so there in the Jordan Valley, Jesus came and was baptized by John the Baptist. And the baptism is the life and death and resurrection. And so this morning, baptism is very important for our lives. It's where we say to the congregation and to the world around about us that we want to be a follower of Jesus Christ and we repent of our sins and we follow after him. And we take Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior Baptism in the Methodist Church, we believe in infant baptism, and we also believe in baptism in three different means. We baptize by sprinkling, we baptize by pouring, and we baptize by submerging. Most of the time, we baptize by sprinkling. But the, the means is not what's so important. What makes the difference is that we listen to the Lord and that we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we repent of our sins and allow the Lord Jesus Christ to come in and live and dwell in our hearts. Baptism is not necessary for salvation. You can be saved without being baptized. For Jesus Christ comes in and lives and dwells in our hearts, and that's what saves us. But then the baptism is what, we, is what we're saying to the world, that we are a child of God and that we are part of the family of God. And so that's what makes the baptism so important in our lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for these precious children. Lord, we just ask that you might move within each and every one of these. And Heavenly Father, that they might listen as you call each and every one of them for a purpose. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might move within each and every one of these. And Heavenly Father, that you might use them as you use John to introduce Jesus to the world. Heavenly Father, may you use each and every one of these precious children to make a difference in the world around the bottom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to remember those that are sick, those that are shut in. We continue to remember those that are bereaved. And I share this note with you. It says, thank you. Dear church family, I want to thank each of you for remembering me at this time of sorrow. I deeply appreciate your thoughtfulness, love, Dorothy Wood. We continue to lift up her sister's family and ask the Lord to continue to be with them in a mighty way. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this day, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for watching over us and guiding and directing us and taking care of us, for being with us in every situation. Heavenly Father, we pray this morning for all those that need your touch. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might be with it in the midst of each and every situation, that you might be with them in a mighty way. 
Heavenly Father, we pray for each and every one of these that are gathered here today. For Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. And Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. And Lord, we just ask for your touch to be upon each and every one of us as you meet our needs today. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gives us that hope for each day, gives us life and gives it to us abundantly. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and we give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 370, Victory in Jesus. Thank you. 
Our Psalter reading today is found on page 761. We're reading from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly being, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and surround like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. The Lord sits throne over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. By way of announcements, today at 4 o'clock we will have our administrative council meeting. And then the last Sunday in the month, uh, January the 27th, we will have our Super Bowl meal together. Uh, the sign-up sheet is in the back. Uh, if you haven't signed up yet for the different items, feel free to do so. And then uh, next Saturday night at 5 o'clock at Shiloh, we will have our Super Bowl uh, meal there. And if you'd like to come for soup next Saturday night at 5 o'clock, just come on and bring a dessert and come on and be with us as we gather around the table there next Saturday at 5 o'clock. So we open the door up so you can have soup on Saturday night and then the following week you can have soup on Sunday. So. We're looking forward to the time of fellowship together. We're continuing to collect quarters for the uh, food bank, and so keep that in mind as we continue to be about the Lord's business during these days. Are there any other announcements that we need to make? May we worship the Lord with our tithes and our offering. <laughs>
Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for these blessings that you have bestowed upon us. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these that have given these blessings. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might use these gifts for the uplifting of your kingdom as we make that difference in the lives of those around about us. Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. In the Gospel of Luke, the third chapter, verses 15 through 17, verses 21 and 22. And as the people were in expectation, and all men musal in their hearts of John, whether he was the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the lackets of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he sets, will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heavens were open, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this day. Thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me as I break the bread of life unto your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come this morning to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, anoint every word that's spoken and every word that's received. In Jesus' name, amen. Our subject this morning is the time for us to listen. As we look at our lives, as we look back, it's easy for us to see how God's hand has worked in the midst of our lives and how God has watched over us and how God has taken care of us. But when we are going through that journey, sometimes we wonder about where the Lord might be. But the Lord is always on time. The Lord will always show up when we need him the most. He will never leave us nor forsake us, but he will be with us always. When we look at the life of Abraham, we don't know who introduced him to God. We just know that Abraham was living in the urn of the Chaldeans, and we know that his family was wealthy and that he was living a luxurious life there in the urn of the Chaldeans. He had practically everything that he needed, and yet God called him out of that situation and told him to go to the land of Cana and to begin a new nation, and the people would be his people, and he would be their God. Abraham would leave this life of luxury to live in a tent and tabernacle the rest of his life. Abraham would leave the urn of the Chaldeans not knowing exactly where he was going and what he was going to do. There was times as we look back, God had his hand on Abraham watching over him as he went from place to place. God took care of Abraham. And the scripture says that Abraham was justified by faith. In other words, he had put his trust in God and went not knowing where he was going, but holding on to the promise that God had made to him, that there would be a city, a great city, and Abraham would go. And the scriptures in, in the New Testament tell us that Abraham was a father of faith. We look the same way in the life of Moses. Moses began his life there in the palace of Pharaoh, but then he knew that that was not his people, and he ended up one day killing a man that was abusing some of his people. And he fled from Egypt. And for 40 years, God kept him in the desert on the backside of it, preparing him for the time when he would call him to go to the land of Egypt and bring out God's people. Now Moses knew about Egypt, but Moses didn't know what he was facing when he would go and face Pharaoh. But God would say simply, tell him, I am who I am. I am God who I am. 
And through the different plagues, God was with Abraham, was with Moses and brought Moses out of the land of Egypt. And when they came to the Red Sea, there was the sea before them, there was the Pharaoh army behind them. What were they to do? God would open up the sea for them to pass over on dry land, and then he would close up the Red Sea when they passed through. God would be with Moses all the way through as he led his people to the land of Cana. God would be with Moses as he went up on Mount Sinai and brought the Ten Commandments back down. God would be with him as he led the people. God had a purpose for him. And that was to bring the law to the people. The law would be temporal, but that was a purpose that God had for Moses. Moses did not make it into the land of Cana, but God used him for that purpose to bring the people to that point. In our story this morning, I told you a couple weeks ago that, that the angel appeared unto Zechariah and Lisbeth and said, You shall have a son, and his name shall be called John, and he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. And his mother was filled with the Holy Spirit. And when John was born, Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we find John in the wilderness, preparing for that time when he would proclaim the coming of the Messiah, when he would tell the people to prepare their hearts for the coming of the Messiah. And God used John during that time to prepare his heart so that he would be able to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus Christ. And John began to preach there in the Jordan Valley. And John was doing the will of God. And John was preaching a message of repentance for salvation and water baptism. John said, I indeed baptize you with water. But there is one that is coming that is greater than I. And I'm not even worthy to loose the lackets of his shoes. But when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And Jesus came into the Jordan Valley. And there he was baptized by John. And when Jesus came up out of the water, the dove descended upon him as the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus. And the voice from heaven would say, This is my beloved Son, and him I am well pleased. Later on, at, towards the end of Jesus' ministry, the voice of God would once again speak and say, This is my beloved Son, listen to him. But when John baptized Jesus in the Jordan River, John said, now my time has come that I must decrease that Christ might increase. And John's life was cut short by Herod and his death. But John fulfilled the purpose of his calling. John listened to God and God used him to present Jesus Christ to the world. And then Jesus Christ was filled with the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And then we can see Jesus as he begins his ministry and how he was able to touch the sight of the blind and, and how he made the lame to walk and how he cleansed the lepers and how he went about doing the will of God. And in the end, he would go to the cross at Calvary to fulfill the purpose for which God had called him to be. 
that perfect sacrifice to die for the sins of the world and there on Calvary's cross, he would fulfill that purpose as he would lay down his life on Calvary's cross and pay the debt for each and every one of us. He would atone for each and every one of us on Calvary's cross. Jesus Christ at, at Calvary paid the price for each and every one of us and gave us everything that we need to live that victorious life. Jesus fulfilled the purpose that God had called him to do. This morning, as we look back on our lives, we can see how God touched each and every one of us and how God used us for a purpose. And when we were going through those times, we didn't understand it all. Sometimes we wondered where God was in the midst of it. But God was always there. God was always watching over us. I can look back over my life, and, and my life, I remember when I was five years old, I fell on a can, and I still have the scars there in Walterboro. I fell on a can and, and almost cut that leader in two. But God was there. God saw me through it. When I was 17 years old, when we were graduating from high school, several of us went down to a, a bridge between Williston and Blackpool to watch a, a woman ghost come up out of the water at, on a full moon night. And as I was stepping out of that automobile, a car came by without any lights on and, and knocked the door back up on my leg. And I can, God's hand wrapped his hand around my leg and bent that door as I looked back. I got a scar there, but it didn't break the bone. It didn't cut my leg off. I still have all the full use of it because God was watching over us. When we was in Vietnam and we was out there in the jungle and we were lost, and we came across the South Vietnamese patrol. God had a hand in it. God was watching over us. And then I can see God's hand as he told me to get up that early in that morning in my grandmother's three-room house and open up the Bible. And somewhere around 2 o'clock in the morning, I got up and opened the Bible to the 25th chapter of Matthew the story of the five wise and the five foolish virgins. And then for the next 14 years, I was sort of like Moses in the wilderness. I was like Apostle Paul in the wilderness. God was preparing me for the time when he would call us to fulfill his purpose. And at the end of those 14 years, you see, we had to get rid of that self-will that self-righteousness, that pride, so that God could use us, so that, that we would open up ourselves for God to be able to use us. And then I, I began the process, and, and then came May, the 1st of May of 1982. The district superintendent called and said, well, Forrest, there's not anything left but one little church in Bamberg that pays $9,000 and Four Point Work in Mullins that pays $11,688. Now, I know that you got a better job at the dairy and, and you're making a whole lot more money. If I was you, I wouldn't take that, either one of those churches, but I'm going to leave it up to you. Well, when God calls you, and you listen to God's calling, you don't worry and you don't think about the money. You just think about fulfilling what God has called you to do. And so I told him, I said, well, we will go to, to Mullins. Didn't have any idea what Mullins was all about. Never been there, never heard about it. But we made that journey to Mullins and God watched over us and allowed us to get our college education while we was there. And then God was with us for seven years at Oak Hill in Pisgah as we 
got our seminary degree at Erskine. God was with us for seven years at Piedmont, and I see how God's hand worked in the midst of us building that building at Piedmont. Forty by eighty, two stories, with about seventy people, finishing it, not on a dime. God's hand was working in it all the way. And then God sent me down here to the wilderness of Gray Court, not knowing anything about Gray Court. But God used us for 13 years to make a difference in the lives of the people. And then we had a choice. We could either go to our home that we had there in Pelzer that we bought while we were at Piedmont. Uh, we had 20 acres in Piedmont that we could build or we could build on the piece of property that Mr. Gentry gave us. We chose to build close to this community and to stay here. We had no idea that two years later that God, that things would not work out and that at the end of the appointment process, there was another change. And the district superintendent sent the, the person at Pisgah to Piedmont, where I had served. He sent the man that was here to Pisgah, where I had served, and asked me if I would come back. God opened the door once again. But God also, during this time, changed my heart and filled me with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and gave me the message that he gave to Apostle Paul. Jesus Christ crucified the message of the cross, that everything that you and I need for a victorious life can be found in the cross and only in the cross and the finished work of Christ and what he did for us on Calvary's cross. Everything that you and I need from salvation to sanctification to, to the fruits of the Spirit to the gifts of the Spirit, everything is right there at the cross. As I look back over my life, I see how God's hand has worked all the way. And God will work in each and every one of your lives the same way if you will listen and open up your heart to him. And at the end of that journey, we have become a millionaire. Not in physical means, but in spiritual means because we have been obedient to the call. God has promised us a heavenly place. And Jesus Christ is our brother. He's our savior. We are heirs and joint heirs, and everything that God owns and all the cattle on the hill belong to him. And because you and I become joint heirs with Jesus Christ, we become heirs of God. And so this morning when we open up our hearts to him and listen to him, he will make that difference. He may simply be calling you to teach Sunday school. He may simply be calling you to sing in the choir. He might call you to change the light bulb, to change the switch and the light switch. But God has a purpose for each and every one of us. And God is calling us this morning, most of all, to live that life that Christ Jesus will shine in each and every one of our lives. And the world will see Christ Jesus in everything that we do. And so this morning, baptism is important. It means the life and death and resurrection. But the most important thing of all is that we listen to God, that we listen to him, that we repent of our sins, and we follow after him, and that we will do his will. He has a purpose and a need for each and every one of us this morning. Hymn number 338. First and last verse, where he leads, I will follow.
Heavenly Father, these are your precious children. Heavenly Father, as you speak to each and every one of these, Heavenly Father, may they open their ears and listen. Heavenly Father, for we know that you will guide us and you will direct us and you will take care of us and you will be with us all the way. Heavenly Father, continue to watch over and use each and every one of these to make a difference in the lives of people all around. And Heavenly Father, we give you the praise and the glory in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.